this integral is actually, if you expand the brackets, is the, is an integral that we can do. Um, so it's, it's an integral that we can do. It doesn't maybe look immediately nice. But if you expand the bracket inside here, then you get x to the 4 minus 2x squared a plus a squared. Um, and that's the integral of the polynomial. Um, so we're fine. We can, we can do that integral with respect to x. Okay. Um, so maybe realizing that multiplying out the bracket made this nicer was the first step that we had to identify. Um, and now that we've multiplied it out, um, we can do this integral. Let's have a go at that. Okay. Um, and I'm hoping that this is going to turn out to be something quite nice in terms of, in terms of a, and um, we've got this a in here still, which I'm treating as a constant. Um, okay. So x cubed a over three, there's still a two in here, isn't there? Plus a squared x between one and zero. People will shout at me in chat if I get this easy integral wrong, right? Oh, messed up the first time, says someone else in chat. That's reassuring for me to know because I'm about to probably mess it up now. I am almost missed that two there. Wish me luck, everyone. Right, okay, this is going to be one-fifth minus two-thirds a plus a squared. Ah, brilliant, that's a quadratic in a. Um, I can't remember which live stream it was, but uh, you might have previously seen questions like this where I really like the way that... Um, these questions with different parameters in can turn out to be uh, a bit like a quadratic in one variable and then maybe later a quadratic in a different variable. It just seems quite fun. Um, okay, we want the smallest value of this quadratic. It's a happy quadratic. Um, it's a happy quadratic looking like this. So it does have some sort of minimum somewhere. Um, different ways to find the minimum of a quadratic. Of course, we could differentiate. Um, I think in this case, I'm a fan of completing the square um, because completing the square I guess forces you to do the calculation um, where you um, work out the minimum value as well. Um, so here it, it's it's this square thing plus one fifth minus a ninth to make that third squared go go away. I just need to work out one fifth minus one ninth. I'll put that over for a common denominator, and I've got nine minus five is four. Ah, brilliant! Okay, it's B. Fantastic. Um, okay. Okay, what does this say? Sketch y equals x minus 1 squared plus 1 for the values x between minus 1 and 3 and show in your graph the area represented by, and then there's a reference back to this i, capital I, meaning this i up here, of 1. Um, quick quick check, what does capital I of 1 mean? Capital I of 1 means, well, everywhere I see, everywhere I see a c, I should replace the c with a 1. That should be this. 1 squared is 1, dx. Aha, so this is the function, this is the um, curve here that I'm being asked to sketch, and i of 1 means the area between 0 and 1, um, or the, the integral between 0 and 1. Okay, um, I should try and sketch this curve, I've been putting off sketching it because I'm a bit scared. Um, this is going to be fine. Uh, well, it's got a minimum, minimum value when x is 1, because that makes that square as small as possible, um, and at that point its value is 1, so it goes minimum at 1, 1. Um, and it's a happy quadratic that looks like this. Um, oh, what's this value when x is 0? This is 1 plus 1 is 2. Welcome to the Oxford Maths live stream. 1 plus 1 is 2. Um, <laughs> how far does it want me to go? It wants me to go down to minus 1. So there's a distance of 2 away. And it wants me to go up to 3. Okay, right, distance of 2 in that direction. So I see what they've done there. There's distance of 2, distance of 2. So it should go up to the same heights, I guess, at there and there. Very nice, right, okay. What does it actually want? Oh, it wants this area, right? The area between, integrate between north and one, that's i of one, okay. Parts two and three, I wanna talk about, it says without explicitly calculating i of c, explain why it's positive, um, which might sound a bit strange, we're being asked to say why something's positive without actually working it out. I think the best approach is to start by looking at i of c and try to work out, is there anything I can say about um, why this thing, um, um, is there anything positive about this at all? Um, here it looks like this area is, is positive. It looks like i of 1 is positive because, well, I guess the function is positive and we're integrating a, a positive function. Um, but this is asking about the general thing with c in there as well. So for this, I went back and looked at i of c. Oh, I saw that, okay, so it's, it's an integral, which is tricky. Um, but the things inside, 
is the, the sum of two squares. So here's a kind of true fact. This, this sum of two squares is positive, I guess, because squares are positive or zero. Um, the live stream taught me to say that carefully after I said squares are positive last week and everyone was like, or zero. I'm sorry, I've learned. Squares are positive or zero. Um, and that means, so since if the integral of f of x, ah, no, what am I doing? What am I, what am I saying? I think I would just write this thing is positive for all x and for all c. So the integral of this thing I think I would just write that to be honest. Um, the fact I'm using here is that the integral of a positive function is positive, which I think is a basic enough fact that you can just quote it. So now they actually wanted to go and do this integral. Um, it's the integral of a quadratic, but hang on, I'd, I'd probably expand this bracket out just like we did in the short question beforehand. So here I would do something like integral from naught to one of x squared minus two xc plus two c squared with respect to x, which is, see if I can, two xc minus c um, plus two c squared. I think if I got that right. Um, that looks right-ish. What's the min minimum value of this function? Um, now that we've seen it's, it's a quadratic in C, um, quadratic in C, um, so I should take my quadratic in C and do something like complete the square to it, right? Um, this, this would be something like this, I think. Um, that's a sixteenth and eighth um, plus a third minus one eighth or something. Um, as C varies, I'd say it takes its minimum value when c is one quarter, uh, and minimum value is one third minus one eighth. Okay. Last part wants to know what's the maximum value. Okay, so that's a change. What's the maximum value of i of sine theta as theta varies? Um, so it's easy to fall into a trap here. Um, we're trying to maximize this quadratic, and you know, quadratics. Um, it's a happy quadratic again, um, and happy quadratics, you know, they, they go up towards infinity. So how are we to maximize it? And I suppose crucially, um, the fact that we need to use here is that we're not varying the input all the way across the real numbers. We're only looking at sine theta between, well, I mean, sine theta only exists between one and minus one. Um, so we should look at what happens to this quadratic between um, minus one and one. So, okay. So it's either the case that this happy quadratic is maximized at minus one or at one. Um, it's not maximized in the middle because it's got a minimum, I think somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it's got a minimum at, at C is a quarter. Um, so this is my little sketch of C this way and it's a picture of I of C. And I'm just thinking about C between minus one and one. I'm going to plug in minus one and plug in one and see which one's bigger. Um, so check what happens at c equals one and check what happens at c equals minus one. And when c is one, I get two times one minus a quarter squared plus one third minus one eighth. And when c is minus one, I get two times minus five quarters squared plus a third minus an eighth. Oh, I'm underneath. I go over here. Um, and I think when you square three quarters, you get something that's smaller than when you square five quarters. So I think it's this number. Oh dear. Made a slight mess of boxing that, but you know what I mean. I would work out both of these values or inspired by Dev's comment, I would not work out both these values. I would just work out the one that's bigger. Um, and say that's, that's my maximum value. Okay. Um, lots of people are saying we're going to turn this into simultaneous, simultaneous equations. Um, but I think we're really going sort of step by step of how do you begin to grapple with this question? So it is in terms of all of these different integrals. Um, and I think there's at least two things you need to do before you can relax having turned it into simultaneous equations. Um, I think the first observation that you need to make is that 
you can bring the three and the two here outside the front of the integrals. Um, and the reason you might want to do that is that because then all of the integrals are at least integrating f. Um, so rather than integrating different things in different places, we're integrating f in each of these cases. Um, that makes it easier to see that this looks a bit like simultaneous equations. Um, why, why are people saying simultaneous equations? Well, yes, they've turned it into things that look like simultaneous equations by careful choice of variables. Um, but I think there's a step where you've got, to, you've got to sort of squint at this and think, I want to work out something to do with some integral of f. Um, so it's sort of my unknown. And this kind of looks like three times, I've no idea what that is, plus three times, I don't know what that is, plus two times, I don't know what that is, is seven. And then over here, there's like something else plus another thing I don't understand. Um, and that's one. And this looks a bit like, you know, where you've got like 3x plus 2y um, and, or something going on in there. Um, so I guess that's the kind of intuition that um, is helpful to have when you see something like this. Um, this is not really a setup that I've seen many times in other questions where you've got like a, a simultaneous equation where the things in the simultaneous equation are integrals. Okay, so um, I said two observations though. So that's my first observation that you can move the three and the two out the front so that these terms at least look like the sort of thing that we're going for, integrals of f. Um, there's this sort of subtle problem about um, the limits of the integrals as well um, that I'd like to address next. I um, mean, see the first one is the integral from naught to one and then one to two. And these limits here are the same, this is one to two as well. But annoyingly, this integral goes from naught up to two. Um, it doesn't match this integral up here. Um, so this is not quite three x plus two y, x plus y. Um, it's one, um, it's those, those um, it, it, we'll work out what x and y are in a moment, I suppose. Um, I need to make this look more like the objects in the first row, if I, if I want to try and make these things look similar. Um, so there's one more idea I need, um, and that's that the integral from naught to one plus the integral from one to two is the same thing as the integral from naught to two. Um, so I'm going to try and draw that graph and maybe you regret this, but like this is like f of x. We've got like integral from naught to one and then integral from one to two. We think about this entire integral from naught to two as the integral from naught to one plus the integral from one to two. Okay, cool. Think about it as a graph. Nice. So what does that actually mean in terms of the second line? I think it means I want to write this second line as the integral from naught to one of f of x dx plus the integral from one to two of f of x dx plus another one of these. So from this first time I get naught to one and one to two, and then from this, this second time I get another one to two. Um, I guess I've accelerated slightly there and combined two lines of work into one line. So this is starting to look like simultaneous equations now. Um, we need to make quite a big conceptual leap, which is to um, introduce letters or variables for these integrals in the question. Um, I think that's quite a big leap to say this thing here, I'm going to call, for example, this integral naught to one f of x dx. I'd call that just a or x or something. X is probably a bad choice because we've already got x's in this question running around. Um, but let's call it a, and I'm going to call the integral from one to two f of x dx. I'll call that b. Um, I think that's quite a big conceptual leap because you, you sort of have to remember here that this integral from 0 to 1 f of x dx has got quite a lot of stuff in it, but it just represents some number. Um, given a function f of x, this is some, some number. So let's give it a name. Um, once you've had that idea though, the equations, suitably writing the equations um, in terms of the same variables here. So this is a plus 2b is 1, I think. Is that correct? Um, okay. I think I'm doing that right. Um, okay, now I've got some nice simultaneous equations, that's A and B. And now I can relax, because solving simultaneous equations like this, where have they gone? There they are. No, not quite. No, how? It's like reflected. Solving simultaneous equations like this is something that I can, I can, I can do just fine, I think. Um, I think I take the difference of these equations and get um, A is 3, and then I subtract the second one and get B is minus one. Slight panic because actually I don't want a or b. I don't want either of these integrals. I want value of a plus b. 
Okay. Um, where again, I suppose I'm using this trick that the integral from 0 to 2 is 0 to 1 plus 1 to 2. Okay. Smashing. I want a plus b. That's 3 minus 1. That's 2, which is d. Okay, what have we got? We've got a cubic, x cubed minus x. And I've got a line y equals m, x minus a. m is positive and a is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so a is somewhere over to the left of minus 1. And uh, m is positive to this positive line up here. Um, okay. So what are we going to do? They touch where x equals b. So what do I want? I think I want... The gradient, so we're going to find the gradient of this line. M is the gradient of this line. And we want to find out this is something to do with something to do with B, which is the coordinate of which is the x coordinate of the point B here. Point capital B. Here we go. Um, the way I would link these things together is to think about the gradient of the tangent to the curve. Hang on, that's related to the derivative of the curve. I'd say that m, because they touch, the gradient of the line, ah, oh, spelling, gradient of line equals gradient of curve, I suppose, at b. So uh, the gradient of the curve is the gradient of uh, x cubed minus x. So d by dx, dy by dx equals m. This is 3x squared. This is dy by dx at b. So this is 3x squared minus 1 at x equals b. It's equal to m. If the gradients match up. Uh, 3x squared minus 1 evaluated at b is 3b squared minus 1, which is m. Okay. Fantastic. I think that's worked out. I think the hard part here was understanding what the things in the in the expression meant. That m was the gradient and b was something to do with where we are. Um, and then the gradients match up. Okay, part two. Um, show further that some fact about a. I haven't even worked out what a is yet. Um, ah, a is in the line. a is something to do with the um, the equation of the line. Okay, okay, so this is sort of the, the line is y equals mx minus ma. Um, so this kind of uh, y-intercept of minus ma in the line. And that's tangent to the curve at b, at x equals b. Okay, so here's my strategy for working out a. I'm going to work out the tangent. So my class is sort of work out the tangent uh, and then compare with compare that with y equals mx minus ma. Working out the tangent of the curve is something that I think you do in the very first bit of AS level sort of maths. We've got the derivative. Um, yeah, let's just go for it, I suppose. Um, what do we know? We know, we know that uh, y is, can I use c for this? I probably don't want to use c. Uh, y is equal to uh, 3b squared minus 1x plus k for some k. And it goes through b, uh, b cubed minus b. Those are the coordinates of b, where I've taken the x value and plugged it into the y value. Okay, so what does that tell me? That tells me that b cubed minus b, so b cubed minus b is equal to 3b squared minus 1 times b plus some constant, plus the constant k. Um, and then I probably want to rearrange that, right? Oh, where's this going to go? So this is minus b cancels out and I get 3b cubed on this side and I get b cubed over here so this is going to be minus 2b cubed equal to k I suppose okay um, so that's the constant in my in my line my line has got uh, my tangent line tangent of the curve is y equals 3b squared minus 1x minus 2b cubed so let's compare compare I know that this um I know oh hello let's go up a bit let's go up over here compare, I know that that constant is, on the one hand, it's minus 2b cubed. I just calculated it to be minus 2b cubed. But in here, it's ma. So now I've got my value of a, it's minus 2b cubed over m, rearranging this for a. Um, and we had m from the previous part of the question, right? 
I've got a minus sign wrong. Uh, oh, yeah, this minus 2b cubed is equal to minus ma. Sorry, I missed this minus sign. It's equal to minus a. So a is 2b cubed over m.